In this video, we are going to understand the CPU-GPU interaction, specifically synchronization perspective. What CPU does? So every program is started from the CPU. CPU acts like a chef, while GPU acts like his assistant. CPU give command to the GPU to execute particular task, but CPU overall controls it. CPU gives the instruction. CPU decides whether it, the task should be executed or not. So CPU simply launch the kernel and moves on. So let's start with an example. Let's say we want to execute this program. Now, uh, the blue colored represent the CPU functions while yellow colored represent GPU kernels. Now the CPU will start from this first uh, function. It's going to execute this first function completely and move further. Once the F1 is finished, it's going to move to the kernel one. It's going to schedule kernel one. By scheduling, we mean that we're going to push the kernel one into some kind of queue which GPU driver maintains. Now the kernel one is pushed to the GPU queue. We don't really care what is happening in kernel one, what GPU does, we don't really care. CPU is just going to move further to kernel two. And it's also, it again sees it's a kernel which should be executed on GPU. It just pushes that kernel to the GPU queue and doesn't really care whether what GPU is doing. So at this particular stage, when kernel two has been scheduled, a GPU is free to run kernel one and kernel two in a sequential manner, but CPU will move further. CPU will move to the next task, which is running F2 function. Since it's, the, it's a CPU function, it's gonna wait until it's completed. So uh, meanwhile, GPU is also running kernel one and kernel two. So it can happen that either of kernel one and kernel two are happening in parallel to function two, or it can also happen the kernel one and kernel two are already finished, or it can happen only the kernel two is running in parallel to function. So there are many possibilities which are, which are possible here. Now, once F2 is finished, CPU uh, again moves further and pushes kernel three to the GPU queue and CPU is done. Now, CPU don't really know whether the kernels are done or not, that is GPU job. So it's possible that kernel one is still executing or kernel two is still executing or kernel three is still executing. But once all the kernels are finished, CPU comes like we get the end of the program. But what if F2 is dependent, F2 inputs is dependent on the results of K2. As we uh, said earlier, it can happen that F2 is running in parallel to K2 in earlier situation. But we now what we want is to have some kind of synchronization involved uh, after after finishing K2. So we will do that using something called CUDA device synchronize. So we're going to push put the CUDA device synchronize statement after this kernel 2, but before function 1. Let's come back to this particular state when the kernel 2 has already been uh, pushed to the GPU queue. Now, now the CPU comes here to this particular borderline, which is Cura device synchronized. It sees, okay, the Cura device synchronized lies here, which means that I have to wait until the GPU is done. So CPU will wait here until the GPU queue is free. So uh, once kernel, so GPU queue will meanwhile run the kernel one and kernel two. So once it finishes kernel one, it's gonna execute kernel two. Now it sees, okay, GPU queue is free. So CPU and GPU will reach at this particular point and CPU will get the uh, instruction that we can, we are free to move further. Now CPU will move further to function two and then move further to K3 and push it to the GPU queue and all the steps would be same as before. Now let's try to understand the applications of this somewhere. So one of the major application of this uh, CPU GPU interaction is in machine learning data pipeline. So in machine learning data pipeline, the typical procedure is as follows. So we have this uh, in each book, we read the data. So we first, before reading the data, we have to open the file in which the data lies. Then we read the data from that particular file. And then we are going to execute that training on uh, the batch on the GPU. So opening the file and reading will happen on CPU while model training will happen on GPU. So in this case, uh, when we are opening the file, we are not really doing the reading. So we have to wait sequentially uh, for opening the file and then we sequentially do the reading and then we sequentially do the training. 
but can we do web better yeah we can if we parallelize cpu and gpu computation then definitely we can do better so this is the better way of uh, building your machine learning data pipeline so what we are doing first we are reading the file uh, first we are opening the file which is happening on cpu then sequentially we are reading the data from that particular file which is shown with this purplish color now we are going to execute this uh, model training step on the gpu but at the same time we are not going to wait we are the cpu is not going to wait now cpu once launches a kernel it's going to move to the next batch so it's going to read the next batch from the uh, disk and it's going to move further so the training step one and batch reading two are going to happen in parallel so this can really happen in speeding up our things especially when we are reading the data from the remote source particularly from the gcs buckets so this is a jax code uh, so jax uh, internally takes care of everything we don't really need to worry how do, how we would implement this pipeline so let's say uh, we are looking at this particular uh, snippet of the code now this data collector is doing some kind of processing over the data now so this is this processing is definitely going to happen on cpu and this train step function is some training step function which is going to happen on gpu so what jax does so when you are preparing batch zero it's gonna cpu is gonna wait cpu is gonna prepare batch zero first then once the batch zero is prepared it's gonna execute the kernel for uh doing the uh, first step of the training so meanwhile it gets the cpu executes the kernel it can actually move further it's not gonna wait at this particular point it's can it can move further and move to the next step so in the next step it's gonna prepare the data data again the batch again and then meanwhile when the batch for the second step is getting prepared the gpu is gonna execute this first step so these two computations are parallelized as we shown in the previous figure also thank you so much